my new tool should be here any day and we need to prepare for it. There's things that need to happen before it can get used and I have an idea for what we're gonna do. That was the end of the sentence. I can't tell you what my plan is yet without spoiling the surprise. Actually, you've seen the you've seen the thumbnail, you know. So to prepare, uh, I'm gonna go downstairs and grab some of my uh, special woods and we'll see which one I wanna work with. I'm not sure yet. I think I found the piece. I found it. First things first, we need to cut this piece of wood uh, in the most normal way I can think of. And now we're left with this, which is much more workable. I have it cut in half for a reason. A good reason that you know already. Thumbnails kind of ruin the surprise, don't they? So basically the goal here is we're gonna take this piece. This piece? Yeah, this piece. And we are going to carve a mountain on this top. This piece will come into play later, as you know, having seen the thumbnail. So for starters, we need to carve a mountain into this top part right now. Being impatient and this is taking too long. Let's actually do this in a safer way. Excuse the noise of the stop. Well, all right, we've got our mountains roughed in. They look good at the moment. They're going to look much better though. This is just our rough shaping. We've got our mountain range, and then we've got a river coming through, waterfall into a lake. Oh yeah. I measured it just so I could see pretty much where we're gonna be losing. So like everything past here, which is why I took everything back a little further on this side. But now we're gonna come back with what? What are we gonna come back with? This thingy right here. And also probably this thingy. And we're gonna refine our detail. Alrighty, so it is ready for the next step. It may look weird right now. It's gonna look really good once we add the paint. I think, I hope. So time to move on to the next step, which is uh, paint. Our mountain is done. So, what we need to do now is something. I believe that something is seal it because this is wood and we are using resin. Uh, any any part where the grain is still exposed, it's gonna bubble like crazy. And I don't want that. I don't want a big stream of bubbles coming at my mountains. So I guess that could look cool, but I'm hoping that doesn't happen. <laughs> One problem with the acrylic paint I use is that it does not like aerosols. It will literally just start dissolving and then it turns brown. So. Unfortunately, the only thing I can use to seal this is Mod Podge, but that's okay because Mod Podge actually behaves very well with resin. So, let's do it. The thing, I mean. I've changed my mind. The original plan was to carve the mountain, suspend this other log right here, cast clear resin in the middle, and turn it into a globe. Both pieces of wood, top and bottom. Here's my problem. This piece 
is small enough to get a good globe. I'd have to be like right there, and then you you know it's kind of hard to see inside of it. I think that's an awesome idea, and I'm definitely gonna do it with a bigger log in the future. But for now, I think we take the next obvious uh, option, and that is just make another mountain. So let's do that. It's gonna be a different mountain, different kind of mountain. This is alpine. This is uh, like something you'd see in Montana. This is what I'm used to. But let's try something I'm not used to. See, this is another example of that thumbnail stuff I was talking about earlier. You guys knew I was gonna change my mind before I did. Alrighty, there is our desert mountain scene. All right, so, you know the drill. Next thing's next is uh, painting. Sorry about the saw noise. I didn't feel like waiting. Alrighty, we've got our alpine mountain and our desert mountain. So, I'm gonna let this one cure overnight. It doesn't need that long, but I'm about to leave anyway. So tomorrow, tomorrow comes the pour, and I hope things go well. <laughs> it is tomorrow, and it's time for the pour. They're ready to pour, let's hope for the best. Alrighty, they are both poured, so I guess we'll return to this in three days. And in the meantime, I'm gonna just try to forget about them. It is an undisclosed amount of time later. Alright, so, they're cured and ready to head to the lathe. We got a result that I am confused by. It formed like a layer of bubbles on top of everything, which I'm not thrilled about, but you know, it is what it is. So I can get a pressure pot or a vacuum chamber, that's just gonna continue to happen. So in other words, I need to stop saying that I need one and just, you know, get on top of making one. Honestly, I work with resin enough that I don't know why I haven't already made one. <laughs> I guess we can just say that this is some dystopian future where everything is underwater now. But I guess, no, no, brine. That's a brine pond. Okay. Plot hole resolved. You know, I used to hate the look of jump cuts and then I started editing videos and realized how much it helps the flow of everything and then there's no dead air and like just pauses and stuff. Just don't overdo jump cuts. So now that these are done, we need to head over to the lathe. But first we need to get them attached to this faceplate. All right, everybody, let's make us a sphere.
All right, everyone, we have it shaped. We have our base sand. So now we are gonna come in and put our finish on the wood and buff the resin, and then it's pretty much done. We can start the next one. First one's done, but reveals come at the end. So let us now set upon El Numero Tuo. Once again, all of our base work and base sanding is done. So, finish and buffing is next. They are both finished. So, let us take a look. guys well there you have it i think they came out freaking awesome and of course just because you know the way resin is they're covered in dust already these were a lot of fun to make so i i think i'm definitely going to be making some more of these there's like no limit to what we can make with this uh same you know concept i'm thinking a uh you know rocky coastline with a lighthouse is in order but i am more than open to suggestions if you guys would like to see more of ecosystems in globes i would love to hear your suggestions because we could do pretty much every environment on earth and then some these are so cool all righty guys well i think that is going to do it for this one these were way too much fun to make and i'm already uh 
got the, you know, wheels turning for what we should do next, because these are something I definitely want to make, uh, you know, more of, like, several hundred, potentially. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments, and uh, give me some ideas for what our next potential biomes in globes should be. I'll have links to various things up in the description, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Well, now this has got me thinking ridiculous thoughts. So hear me out. What if we make a globe and then put that globe inside of another globe and then we put that globe in another globe and then we put